betting that a strong uh, content slate for the rest of 2019 would reverse what was a shock second quarter loss uh, in U.S. subscribers that sank its stock price around 11%. More tension in the Middle East. What, the Navy, the U.S. Navy has uh, shot down an Iranian drone. It seems like the drones are the issues now between the U.S. and Iran in particular. That oil price now climbing around 2% this morning. The Navy destroying an Iranian drone in the Strait of Hormuz, uh, a major choke point, of course, for global crude flows. Again, raising that tension then in the Middle East. The barrel of oil is at $63.11. And the rand strengthening then, Bongani, after your discussion, of course, with the Deputy Governor of the Reserve Bank, Rashad Kasim, and his team decided yesterday to cut interest rates by 25 basis points. Uh, the unanimous decision may, however, be the only joy this year. A few more risks cited in, polit- in monetary policy easing. It's 13.84 for a US dollar, 15.58 for a euro, and 17.35 for a British pound. Gold is at 1,000. Four hundred and forty three dollars an ounce, eight hundred and fifty six dollars an ounce for platinum. Arabile Kumete, EWN Business. Thank you, Arabin. We'll speak to Adam Gilchrist to get some more details about uh, that uh, Iranian drone that's coming up in the worldview. Right now, though, it's time for your latest eyewitness news. Over to you, Ayanda. Thanks, Bongani. Good morning. Residents from several areas that have been blocked off in southern Joburg say they are tired of hearing empty promises made by government to end land invasions and build more houses. Areas affected by the protests include Lanesia South, Ennedale, Clipdown and Zakaria Park. Community members have barricaded several roads in and around these areas with burning tires and rocks. Parts of the Golden Highway have also been affected. This protester, Keith Duarte, says government must act and stop the invasions once and for all. We're not sounding xenophobia, but we are saying priorities are given to, to, to people as not even South African citizens. And that is, that, that, that is fueling uh, the emotions of our people. We need houses, we need proper development that takes place. We're in engagement with government and we want to see what, 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 what they can produce. EFF leader Julius Malema has accused the South African Communist Party of undermining the public protector by rallying behind public enterprises, Minister Pravin Gordon. At a media briefing in Parliament last night, Malema urged EFF supporters to come out in support of public protector Busisi Mkwebane when her report on the so-called road unit goes to court. Malema says the EFF will counter any campaign in support of Gordon by the SACP. Threats made by Solima Pain against the EFF And the invitation that we must meet on the streets. And uh, we are here to say to Soluma Paila, we welcome the invitation. Uh, We're not scared of him. Yesterday, the SACP Solima Paila spoke at the launch of the Hands Off Our Democracy campaign at the Ahmed Kathrada Foundation. He says the party and other civil society organizations will hold a mass rally in support of Gordon. A doctor who's been found guilty of stealing body parts at the Tlipdoof mortuary will be sentenced today. Dr. James Wasinger was found guilty of organ theft in the Kempton Park Magistrates Court yesterday. He was charged in 2014 after he was caught walking out of the Soweto government mortuary with a packet containing body parts. Robinson Ngola has the story. The DA in Gauteng says the court must set an example and impose the harshest sentence for the doctor who has been found guilty of stealing body parts. The party's Jack Bloom says they welcome the court judgment. I think there needs to be a very, very severe sentence. It's very, very distressing for families to know that uh, body parts can be stolen at a state mortuary. I think a precedent needs to be set that, uh, in fact, uh, cases like this are very, very severely punished. Bloom says the matter shouldn't have been allowed to drag on this long. Sentencing proceedings will be had in the Kempton Park Magistrates Court this morning. Robinson Mola, Eyewitness News. A quick look at stories making international headlines in Japan. Authorities say the man suspected of torching an animation studio in the city of Kyoto may have planned the attack. At least 33 people have been confirmed dead and 33 others were wounded in the attack yesterday. Protesters in Hawaii are facing off with authorities over plans to build a telescope on top of a mountain that some native Hawaiians consider sacred. The 30-meter telescope would be amongst the largest in the world. And how often do you pay attention to messages on everyday products? Well, the 60-year-old man in eastern France says he was stunned to discover that a picture of his amputated leg had been used on cigarette packets as a warning against smoking without his consent. Now, the picture was displayed along the message, smoking clogs your arteries. But the unnamed man says he lost his leg due to a shooting in Albania in 1997. The European Commission, which is responsible for the distribution of such messages, says the man is mistaken. 
A fine Friday in store for Gauteng. Lows from 2 to 7 degrees. Highs between 21 and 25. Yeah, the roads are still quite busy, especially if you're on the N1 southbound uh, traveling through Midrand because of an earlier accident near the Willy Fontaine Road exit. It's causing a 20-minute delay for you. There's also one on the R55 near Copano Street in Olivenot Bosch. Uh, traffic lights, by the way, Ravonia Road, both the exits, N1 south and N1 north, aren't working. Uh, out of Tabachwani, N14 south between Kosi Mampura and Irfias. There are delays as you leave there this morning and also quite a backup in Eastland on the N1 south between Safako Mahato Drive and the Proof Plus Interchange. The top story, residents from several areas that have been blocked off in southern Joburg say they are tired of hearing empty promises made by government to end land invasions and to build more houses. Your journey, your drive with Tiger Wheel and Tire and Goodyear. Enhance your drive with an unbeatable range of big brand tires, like 13-inch Goodyear passenger tires from just 679 per tire. Goodyear, safer and sustainable driving. This winter, buy two or more Goodyear tires and we'll donate one of 15,000 blankets to charity. Tiger Wheel and Tire, journey on. Go to TWT.co for details. Conditions apply. Panda this weekend for an estimated 55 million rand jackpot on Powerball this Friday. And an estimated 54 million rand jackpot on Lotto this Saturday. Buy your tickets now from participating retailers, the National Lottery website, or our mobile app. Panda Pusha Play. Players must be 18 years and older. Play responsibly. For vision, touch, taste, sensory exploration of molecular gastronomy, visit Quantum Tastery. With molecular portion sizes at astronomical prices. 12 experimental courses heightened by ultra-modern ambience. More like 12 courses of crumbs, smears and specks of food eaten in near silence. It's easy to get tempted into unnecessary spending. That's why Coronation is encouraging South Africans to save instead this National Savings Month. To invest, talk to your financial advisor. Coronation. Trust is earned. Coronation is an authorized FSP. The rich aromatic smell of coffee mixed with the decadent sweet taste of chocolate. That can only mean one thing. It's time for the 2019 Coffee and Chocolate Africa Expo and at 702, we can't wait. Learn how to master the art of coffee and chocolate at one of the free workshops, buy your favorite products or chill out in the Coca Moka Music Lounge. The 2019 Coffee and Chocolate Africa Expo, 26 to 28 July at the Ticket Pro Dome. Tickets at itickets.co.za, more on 702.co.za. Burgess Plumbing Services are now open on Saturdays and Sundays. This is 8 in the morning until 5 p.m., including their after-hours emergency service. They also offer specialist plumbing and drain cleaning services, water solutions, and more. You can call them on 0860 40 41 42. That's 0860 40 41 42. Or visit burgessplumbing.co.za and experience the Burgess Plumbing difference now. 702. 702. What's the question? What's the question is brought to you by Outsurance and it's your chance to win 2,000 Rand in cash. SMS out to 38350 now and see if you can save and win. Today's answer is 10. 10,000 10, is today's answer. What's the question? Well, you tell us. 011 883 0702. Sport. So at six o'clock, I listened uh, to your sports bulletin, Cindy. I nearly had a heart attack. Uh, you explained it, of course, about an hour ago. So I'm, I'm a lot more calm. Uh, we're still in the World Cup. Yep, absolutely. It was all preliminary stages up until now. Spa Proteus lost to England last night, 58-47. They're still through to the semi-final and will play defending champions Australia tomorrow. Captain Bong Gim Somi injured her ankle in the first quarter. Goalkeepers and 11 bullers expecting the semi-final to be tough. It's bound to be more aggressive. Also, you know, that's nothing different from what we got from the English game. Obviously, we're just going to look at um, how we can improve on our connections and our tactics on the game. 
The other semi-final is England against New Zealand. In golf, South African Dylan Fratelli is alongside world number one Brooks Kepka just two off the pace after the first round of the Open. JB Holmes shot a 66 for a one-shot lead. Grace Van Roy and Oersthuizen are four off the pace, while Harding, Els and Lombard are even par. Woods and Sterney finished on seven over. McElroy was eight over. Rugby Championship starts tomorrow. The Springboks are hosting Australia at Ellis Park. A number of injuries on the Wallaby side sees Harry Johnson Holmes get his first cap. Isi Nasirana debuts at eighth man. Nick White, James Slipper and Savita Karadrani have been included with Tom Banks getting his first international start. Former Springbok James Small was laid to rest yesterday. He died last week from a heart attack. Victor Matfield was there to share some memories. For me personally, I can remember as a 21-year-old walking into a Cats team room where I didn't know any guy. And um, James was the first guy to call me up and say, hey, youngster, come sit here with me. And he almost pulled me into that group. And uh, he just had the heart. We just wanted to get everyone together. Former Proteus Foss bowler Alan Donald has been indicted and inducted rather into the ICC Cricket Hall of Fame along with Sash and Tendulka. Donald said it was the biggest shock to open an email with the news and attributed his success and career to Hansi Cronier's dad, Ivy, as well as his uncle, Des Donald, and Bob Wilmer, who mentored him through his international cricket career. That's a lovely story, right? It is. Donald it is. and Sachin, yeah. And he said an he, never, he just never expected it. Oh, so, no. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, fantastic news. I like that. ICC suspended Zimbabwe with the immediate effect for failing to ensure there's no government interference in the running of the sport in that country. It's just a, so sad because, you know, Zimbabwe were really coming on both in terms of test cricket uh, a little while ago and even the ODIs. I mean, remember, I mean, essentially they got, uh, you know, they, they beat us in the 1999 mm-hmm. uh, World Cup and it, and so many of the guys really just played cricket for the love of the game. Yep. And the idea that once again, politicians are messing up, uh, talented, talented, uh, yeah, it's a sad day for Zimbabwe it's frustrating, cricket. frustrating, right? Banyana coach Desiree Ellis made six changes to her squad for the Kasafa Women's Championship starting 31 July. There's no overseas players available. Tonight's the final of AFCON Algeria against Senegal at 9 o'clock. At the Tour de France, Simon Yates won stage 12. Julian Alaphilippe retains the yellow jersey. At the FINA World Champs, the SA Women's Water Polo team lost 26-1 to the USA. Cindy Paluta, EWN Sport. 702. 702. What's the question? For 2,000 Rand in cash, thanks to Artsurance, please tell me what's the question if the answer is 10,000. And Tabi saying, you're in Gazina of all places. What's the question? Uh, but maybe the question is how many keys from the underprivileged community are going to be taken towards the New Lion King movie. Absolutely. King. Absolutely, Ntabi saying That is absolutely the right question. You win 2,000 Rand in cash, all thanks to Artsurance and 702. So Ntabi saying guess what? You don't have an excuse what? now to not go see the Lion King. We've given you 2,000 Rand. <laughs> ah, I can do with that. Thank you so you much could do it. Lying. Listen, we could all do with that. You're welcome, Tabi saying Congratulations, winning 2,000 Rand. I think that's absolutely fantastic. In about an hour or so, a little earlier, in fact, I'll be in conversation with uh, the great Dr. John Ghani, of course, uh, playing the role of Rafiki in the new Lion King movie. Now, while news reports say nearly half of all Brits are stockpiling goods in case of a no-deal Brexit, well, you could also stash up some money, 25,000 Rand, in fact, in your bank account by simply SMSing out to 38350 or calling 08600 60,000. So get a car insurance quote from Outsurance, and if you save and enter, you could win that amount for yourself. 25,000 Rand and we'll throw in 25,000 Rand for charity. Do it now. SMS out to 38350 or call 08600 60,000. Get ready to save and win. Outsurance is a licensed insurer and FSP. T's and C's and standard call rates apply. And it's 50 cents per SMS. EWN Traffic. In the traffic at the moment, uh, I can tell you that we've got those delays on the N1 South are pretty bad because of uh, the accident scene as you're coming uh, through the Midrand area. So uh, that backup now extending back to the Brackfontein interchange. Also, the R55 through Olivenot Bosch is quite slow because we did have an earlier crash scene over there as well. Um, the traffic lights at the Ravonia exits of the N1 North and South are not working, so expect some delays there. Uh, coming off the Woodmeat exits off the M1 South is also quite slow at the moment. Uh, 
just allow for some extra time. I, I suspect the, the reason for this is those traffic lights at Woodlands Drive that are problematic. Um, and that's what's probably one of the reasons causing a delay. Uh, around uh, the uh, Rosebank, Ilovo, Dunkeld areas is an accident on Jansmatz Avenue at 8th Avenue. And uh, the in situation in Zachariah Park, Linasia South, remains quite tense at the moment. Roads blockaded there. Though one of the routes that it's affected there is Golden Highway. So try and avoid the area if you can. Aki Anastasiu, EWN Traffic. Somewhere in between school runs, meetings and studying, life happens. That's why we've made sure everything happening on 702 is available on 702.co.za. So, if you missed an interview because of an incoming call, or wanted to hear the end of the interesting conversation, but had a meeting to attend, simply go to 702.co.za. You can listen to, read about and comment on what's happening on your number one news and talk station. Whenever, wherever. 702.co.za. For the curious. As South Africa continues to compete in the global market, technology is one of the factors that will help move the country forward. Not only does it help communities to connect, but as more and more businesses go digital, the customer experience becomes even more important. That's one of the reasons why BCX creates innovative ICT solutions that are aimed at helping businesses connect with their customers to create real value. Visit bcx.co.za to find out how one of their industry experts can help you help your customer. Because for BCX, the most important customer is yours. When the President of the Republic is kidnapped by dark forces, the scramble to save her unveils an underworld of dirty dealing, money laundering, and pure corruption. Someone is sitting on something big that could blow the whole country to dust. Can anything be done about the state of the nation? Split loyalties, broken contracts, and disgraced love are at the center of this political drama. Don't miss the Republic. Sundays at 8 p.m. on Mzansi Magic. DSTV Compact. Kumnande Kai. You love the way they ooh and ah over your home decor. You think about telling them that they can get it all at Metro Lifestyle. That the grand opening in Northgate Shopping Center is this Saturday, 20 July. That they'll find mind-blowing specials. But instead, you smile secretly and click on to metrolifestyle.co.za to see what else you can get to make them drool. Metro Lifestyle, your multi-award winning name in homeware, fabrics, decor, televisions and so much more. 702. What's going viral with Kabazela? Always good on a Friday. Kabazela. Oh, I stole oh, your you line. Oh, my <laughs> line, you bugger. Are you well? I'm very well. I'm very well. Happy Friday. Listen, I'm so excited. I know. It's, I've it's, heard you. This yeah, morning. I just, I cannot wait. It's going to be the things that do the things that undo the pots and the kettle <laughs> and the pans and everything. And talking about new movies, what, two trailers are being released today? Yeah, two trailers have been released. And uh, the first movie which we'll talk about is called Top Gun. Maverick. Top Gun! Oh, my goodness! Yes, so... So uh, who's, who's in it? It's uh, Tom Cruise. He reprises uh, no. the role of Pete Maverick Mitchell. No! Um, which I think is great. Because if you had to remake Top Gun and use somebody else... To play those characters from yeah. 1985, yeah, this movie yeah. is old. Nin- I don't yeah. think it would work. So, so uh, that, that's the one view. Yeah. On the other hand, you say, but Uncle Tom, I mean, <laughs> that that slipped out. The, not that <laughs> Uncle Tom, Uncle Tom Cruise. I mean, it's must have um now. He is a worm, but he still looks really, really good. Yeah, and he has looked after himself. I'll yeah, give him he, that. He, he looks. He's, he's, he has looked after but himself. But can you still believe him? What? How many years later? So he plays. He now is a flight 34 instructor. Thirty-four years later. Yeah, thirty-four years later, he's now a flight <laughs> instructor. Yeah. Uh, and he now needs to train Goose. Remember Goose's son, uh, Goose, uh, who was his um, friend, yeah. friend who died yeah. in the movie. Yeah. His son comes through the ranks now. Now uh, to, um, Tom Cruise has to train Goose's son. But let's take a listen to the trailer and it'll give you a little mm, bit more context. Okay. 30 plus years of service. Combat medals, citations. Only man to shoot down three enemy planes in the last 40 years. You can't get a promotion, you won't retire. Despite your best efforts, you refuse to die. You 
should be at least a two-star admiral by now. Yet here you are. Captain. What is that? It's one of life's mysteries, sir. Okay. Do you think that's going to convince him to ditch Lion King for that? You're mistaken. <laughs> no, I promise you. You see the scenes from this trailer and it looks spectacular. It's the trailer. Okay. So it's not the same thing as the opening night. Listen, listening to that. Mm. Okay. I'm convinced. Yeah. I'll watch it. It'll work. It'll okay. Work. It, I, it'll see work. It. I, I see it. See it. I, I see, see it. I see it working. All right. Okay. Then the next one that's been uh, released is a live uh, action movie adaption of Cats. And this a musical, yeah, remember the, Cats the Andrew musical. Lloyd Webber musical, okay. Exactly. And this looks really, really good as well. It's got all the stars. It's got Idris Elba. It's got Dame Judi uh, Dench. It's got um, Taylor Swift. It's got James Corbin. It's, oh. there's a, it's a major, major cast. Oh my! And uh, it's really, really good. I can't remember the character's name, but it's the one who sings the famous song, the famous song of memories, which I'll play for you now. It's played by Jennifer Hudson. But take a listen oh, to wow. her singing that song. <laughs> Okay, I mean, so I love Jennifer Hudson, yeah. I really do, but she has a thing where I think she oversings songs, right? Mm -hmm. I just, I, I miss a tenderness in her voice that I just never quite hear. But she's great for very theatrical productions, which will work. So in this. maybe it'll work in this in this instance. Yeah. Um, okay. So that's uh, out early December, and the Tom Cruise. A uh, remake of uh, Top Gun comes out in 2020. Okay, so we'll see. Maybe let's ask this question because mm. uh, I'll be talking to John Gunn in just about 40 minutes or thereabouts. Yeah. Are there movies that should just be left alone, right? Uh, like Top Gun. Should he just have just walked away from that one, not try and uh, revive it, reprise it? Um, are there movies that, that shouldn't you be think remade? should never be remade? I, I got can, one for you. Yeah? Godfather. It's an offer, but what if they make yeah, you an offer? Classic. You can't can refuse. I cannot make an offer that can never feel. <laughs> All right. Uh, mine won't be A Few Good Men. I'll take your thoughts on that one. 011-8830702. Movies that should not be remade. 702. The Africa Reports with Crystal Audison. All right. Uh, what's going on on the rest of the continent? Uh, good morning to you, Crystal. A happy Friday. Let's start with Ethiopia facing a shutdown. This is uh, over a new... Well, there, there's been a caller on this issue, right? Uh, the Sidama ethnic group. They want a new independent region within their country. Yes. Good morning, Bongani, and happy Friday. So you can imagine Ethiopia is a country with more than 100 people with diverse ethnic backgrounds, interests, histories. And so the country is partitioned into nine semi-autonomous regions. So the constitution requires the government to organize a referendum for any ethnic group that wants to form um, a new entity. So, for instance, in southern Ethiopia, we have the Sadama group, who for years have been agitated um, for a referendum and to, you know, create their own state. But this is complicated, Bongani, in a country like Ethiopia, with, as I mentioned, diverse ethnic backgrounds. So this week, people were waving their flags in anticipation that the political leaders were going to break away um, and form their own state. And then um, we heard earlier this week the Electoral Commission said, well, actually, they're not ready to have it, and so perhaps, you know, they need some time. So there were real concerns that, you know, bloodshed will happen because, you know, people have been agitating, they've been protesting for a long time, um, and, you know, political leaders um, promised that there will be some outcome. But then at the last moment, um, you know, past 24 hours, 
the political leaders of this um, Sidema actually accepted the new timeline, um, they say, in the interest of peace. But this, of course, has not stopped young people still going out on the streets. So there's been reports of clashes between um, young people and Ethiopian security forces. Um, there's also there's been an internet shutdown. And so um, political analysts point out that, look, um, you know, the federal government, as in Addis Ababa, has no option but to go ahead with this. And analysts point out this, of course, could also inflame the country's political crisis because we do know um, the prime minister came into power a year ago making lots of promises regarding reform, but he himself is still under fire. He had an attempted coup um, last month. And so a showdown has averted for now. But I think the sort of ethnic composition of Ethiopia and its big population still means that it's a far way to go before we can say that, you know, things are all good that side. All right, very quickly then, Crystal, this uh, $100 million fund for families uh, of the victims of the Lion Air flight, uh, this is, of course, uh, in uh, Ethiopia, and the Ethiopian uh, Airlines flight, I beg your pardon, uh, those two incidents where those Boeing uh, crashes happened, uh, Lion Air was uh, the, uh, not the Ethiopian one, uh, that was the Indonesian one, I think it is. A hundred million dollars for the fa- for the families of the victims. Yes, Pongani. So look, I mean, um, ironically, you know, there's Congress hearings happening in Chicago and really heartwarming and sad testimony from Kenyans who have lost loved ones. Um, and at the same time, Boeing, um, you know, approving fifty million for um, family relief for um, um, victims from the Ethiopian crash. Um, it's quite interesting they've been on a PR offensive. Bongani sending out press releases to me, you know, and saying that, uh, for instance, you know, the accident still weighs heavily on the company and the utmost sympathy to the loved ones. All monies will be in the, um, distributed independently from any resolution. But the Kenyan families, Kenyan families in particular, have rejected this proposal of compensation. They say they will pursue their own claims in court and also have rejected any negotiations outside the court. Now, the Kenyan, Kenyan families say they've already been approached twice to initiate a settlement, um, but they're not going to do it. They are going to pursue a separate case, but they won't be pursuing any compensation claims again uh, against Ethiopian Airways. Now, the families say they want the company to release documents related yeah. to the trial 737 MAX 8 model and also admit that it could profit before safety. Now, this is obviously going to be a legal showdown, Bongani. You can imagine Boeing is the world's largest aircraft manufacturer. There are ordinary families in Kenya that lost loved ones, and they want um, you know, justice for their families. So it's going to take some time. Um, we, of course, know that there were 35 nationalities on that um um, faithful flight um, in Ethiopia that crashed in March that, you know, 157 people were um, killed. Yeah. So um, it's still a long way to go, but um, clearly, you know, the, fam- the Kenyan families really want justice. All right, we'll leave it there. This morning's Africa Report. Win, win, win with Celsius' fantastic Friday deal of the week. Get the Huawei P30 on Media Play 4 gig top up and enjoy 23 live TV channels with free streaming on Black TV. Plus, you get 4 gigs data and 15 hours talk time every month for only 699 rand per month. Valid this Friday only while stocks last. So get to your nearest Celsius store or call 084 145 now. T's and C's apply. Celsius. Connect your way. If furthering your education, is on your to-do list, the business school at IIE MSA can help fast-forward your career. IIE MSA is a world-class institution founded by Monash University and now a leading brand of the Independent Institute of Education. Select from a range of IIE postgraduate diplomas and MBA or MIB degree offered at IIE MSA. Apply now. Convenient, flexible and affordable. Visit iiemsa.co.za. IIE MSA, the world-class. Are you in the market for a luxury pre-owned vehicle? Well, avoid expensive mistakes and contact a Sandown Mercedes-Benz dealer now for competitive pricing and expert advice. So they have the largest selection of certified pre-owned and demo vehicles available in Johannesburg. And they offer tailor-made finance packages, unbeatable trade-in offers, the balance uh, of maintenance plans, and 24-hour roadside assistance. So visit Mercedes-Benz in Santon, Rosebank, North Cliff or Constantia Cliff today. T's and C's apply. For more info, SMS Merck 
to 31155. The SMSs are charged at 1 Rand 50. Celebrating the freedom of the airwaves. There are now more than 300 stations across the country, and the National Association of Broadcasters encourages each of its members to be grounded in the principles of democracy, diversity, and freedom of expression. The voice of South Africa's broadcasting industry, the NAB, is that voice. Celebrating 25 years of freedom in broadcasting. Visit nab.org.za. 702 Breakfast. Good morning, For the curious. All right, an SMS coming through. I feel that remakes are a bit lazy. Pulp Fiction cannot remake that, says one SMS. I'll be taking your calls. What movies, what films should not be touched in your view? And, you know... <sighs> We speak to authorities all the time and they give us the same tired answers at times. And maybe this morning, if you're in the south of Johannesburg, if you are in Linasia, if you are in Zachariah Park or those areas where we've seen those protests and that shutdown, why don't you give us a call? 011-8830702. Tell us about your frustrations, uh, real experiences of what's going on there. Because as I said earlier, Uh, I mean, obviously, I sympathize with the landless, but the idea of people popping up next door or a road across from me, um, and it becomes a permanent settlement because the authorities seem paralyzed to do anything about it, is something I just, I have to have some sympathy with because I I can't imagine what that would do. So we'll take your calls after this eyewitness news brought to you by Khalix for the businessman who knows what he wants. This is Eyewitness News. Police bring in reinforcement as land protests spread in southern Joburg and the SACP questions Mkweba and his fitness for office. Good morning, um, I am Danyati. More officers have been deployed to southern Joburg this morning as protests over illegal land occupation spread to more areas. Residents in Cliptown and Pratia South have now joined communities from Linasia South, Ennerdale, Zakaria Park and Eldorado Park in voicing their anger and frustration. They have now taken matters into their own hands, bringing the areas to a standstill by barricading main roads. This man says he had to make a U-turn on the Golden Highway. I'm making a U-turn on the Golden Highway now because it's also blocked down that way. I'm actually going home now, which is depriving me of my day's work, and it's costing me time. Logan Reddy stays in Linasia South. He's accused the authorities of turning a blind eye to land invasions. Land invasion is getting out of hand at the moment. We are surrounded by informal terms. This is not stopping and it's causing havoc. The crime rate has gone up. The infrastructure can't cater for it. How do we live in this area with this government that's causing such havoc? The Joburg Metro Police's Kolani Fisha says officers have been deployed to monitor the protests. Zakaria Park in the region G has uh, just went into a total shutdown. There's plus minus 70 community members closing off the road. Then there's also reports of protests uh, in Annadale. All exit roads out of the area are blocked off, so please exercise extreme caution when traveling in those areas. Former President Jacob Zuma is back in the hot seat at the State Capture Commission of Inquiry this morning, where his testimony is set to continue. However, it's unclear how the line of questioning will unfold today after proceedings adjourned abruptly on Wednesday, with Zuma's lawyers accusing the commission of bringing the former president under false pretense. Zuma's legal team also accused the commission of unreasonably expecting him to recall details from a long time ago. Teto Matlakwana reports. On Wednesday, proceedings were postponed to today to allow the legal teams for Zuma and the commission to work out an ideal way forward for all parties. This after Zuma and his legal team objected to the manner in which he's been questioned. Zuma was invited to the commission to offer clarity on testimonies that implicated him. Teto Matlakwana Eyewitness News at the State Capture Commission in Park Sound. The SA Communist Party has called on Parliament to launch an investigation into public protector Busisu Mkwebane. The party says Mkwebane's recent report against Public Enterprises Minister Pravin Gordon calls into question her fitness to hold office. They say the integrity of the Chapter 9 institution is at stake. Bonga Zulane has more. SACP Solima Paela says public protector Busu Mkwebana's recent findings against Pravin Gordon is proof that she's not fit to be public protector. Mapaela says he wants parliament to act against her. But we reaffirm in this regard our call as we join this statement that an inquiry on a fitness to hold office must soon be, be set up by parliament. 
Mapela has warned Mkwebwana not to allow herself to be used by politicians to advance their own interests. The public protector must not allow herself to be used as the hired gun of the fight back campaign. The party says it wants parliament to act soon before the credibility of the Chapter 9 institution is destroyed. Bonga Lulane, Eyewitness News. Meanwhile, President Cyril Ramaphosa has come out in defense of Gordon, saying he was appointed as Public Enterprises Minister because of his commitment and integrity. With the Reserve Bank cutting the repo rate by 25 basis points, economists say there's scope for further cuts. Governor Lesicha Khanyako announced yesterday that the rate was being cut to 6.5%. He cited improved inflation, a stronger currency, but a weaker growth forecast of 0.6% for 2019. Ray White takes a look. The 25 basis points cut had been widely expected, but some economists say the Reserve Bank could have gone further. Chief Economist at Ned Bank, Dennis Dykes. Obviously, it's good news for, for consumers because, um, you know, most interest rates are, are attached uh, via prime to the repo rate. And uh, it means that there'll be some relief for consumers as well as the, the corporate sector. Group Chief Economist at Standard Bank, Gulam Balam. There remains a prospect of even further interest rate cut uh, in the very near term. However, Reserve Bank Governor Lesetje Khanyaho says the bank will continue to monitor the country's overall economic outlook. Ray White, Eyewitness News. And in Britain, MPs have supported an attempt to stop a new Prime Minister suspending Parliament in order to force through a no-deal Brexit. The vote saw government MPs ignore orders to vote against the motion. Four ministers abstained and one resigned. Our UK correspondent Gavin Gay reports. Within the week, the UK will have a new Prime Minister and all the signs are pointing towards a victory for Boris Johnson. The former Foreign Secretary has pledged that deal or no deal, he would take the UK out of Europe by the end of October. To avoid being overruled by MPs, he hasn't dismissed a proposal to suspend Parliament to force that through. However, the vote, which passed with a majority of more than 40, would prevent suspension between October and December unless the devolved government of Northern Ireland is reformed. The next Prime Minister's options have narrowed further. Gavin Gray, Eyewitness News, London. Golds at $1,441.92 an ounce, around $13.84 to the dollar, $17.35 to the pound, $15.58 to the euro. Brent crude oils at $63.10 a barrel. In the traffic at the moment, we've got the N1 South still a bit slow. Excuse me, as you're coming through the Midrand area, the uh, other situation is the um, accident scene on Willy Fontaine Road in the Olivenote Bosch area. As you're approaching Willy Fontaine Road off the R55, expect those delays coming through Sam Rand as well. Traffic lights are not working. Ravonia Road in the N1 South coming off the off ramp. Also the N1 North at Ravonia Road and also in Monument Park. Slow traffic on the R21 North. Uh, the N1 flying saucer interchange up until Elephant Road. Quite slow coming through the area. In your sport, Dylan Fratelli's two off the pace going into the second round of the Open today. JB Holmes leads by one. He's on six under. At the Nepal World Cup, South Africa will play Australia tomorrow afternoon in the semi-final. And the Springboks battle Australia in the opening rugby championship match at Ellis Park at five o'clock tomorrow afternoon. A fine Friday in store for Gauteng. Joburg starting out at four degrees, reaching a high of 23. Pretoria, seven and 25. Ferenigheng, two and a high of 21. The developing story in Eyewitness News this hour. More officers have been deployed to southern Joburg this morning as protests over illegal land occupation spread to more areas. Eyewitness News. In touch, in tune, and independent. For the latest, visit ewn.mobi. Did you know that over the past three years, the Khalik Suit Trade in Promotion has collected over 5,000 suits? These suits have been refurbished and been put to good use, particularly by graduates from Africa to Kun who received a suit possibly for the first time. Khaliks in Africa to Kun are tirelessly working to help young first time job seekers. So visit Santon Oriental Plaza. A Cedar Square and Mall of Africa. Trade in and trade up. Khaliks for the businessman who knows what he wants. Tell him I sent you. 50,000 people will walk on the 28th of July. Hope you'll be part of the fun. 702 Breakfast with Bongani Bingwa. Live. Online.
smartphones, DSTV, and 92.7 and 106 FM. It's 10 after 8. Uh, please stay with us. My conversation with John Gunny is coming up just after the 8.30 news, and it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, Brad John, just such a legend, such a fantastic human being. But I'm really taking your responses uh, to this issue that uh, is uh, bubbling up in the south of Johannesburg, frustrated residents barricading roads. Uh, the area, we're told, at a virtual standstill, people can't leave or enter. And I've asked the question, is there any government in the world that would be paralyzed by this kind of thing, uh, by illegal occupations. Why this inaction? Uh, what are your thoughts on that? O double one eight eight three zero seven. If you're a resident of the area, I really want to hear your experiences, not perceptions, not what people believe, but why it is uh, that it is so difficult to live with this uh, situation in that area. Perhaps if the authorities are listening, uh, they might just respond to your real human stories, your human experiences experiences. Uh, So I really want to hear that. And of course, movies that should be left alone, movies that shouldn't be touched. And are you, as I am, looking forward to the new Lion King? Bungani Bingwa on 702. On 702. Call him on 011-883-0702. Jackson, you're in Santon. You want to talk about the Reserve Bank. Uh, your point is that what only a few countries uh, have uh, central banks that are... Is it independent, you are saying? Yes, Bungani. There are only six countries in the entire world that are independent. And amongst those countries are Spain and Italy that belong to the pigs. You remember the pigs, the guys that were not doing well economically in the recent past? And, and in there is Switzerland, Japan, and uh, Turkey, and ourselves. And <laughs> really, why do we want to present this thing as if this, we, we want to do something that's so outrageous and it's going to decimate the economy when only six countries in the world you have, you have independent uh, central banks. Why? When you say independent, I just want to make sure we're on the same page. Are we talking about ownership of the Reserve Bank or are we talking about independence in terms of its ability to make its ownership own decisions was, independently? No, it's, it's ownership because this is the way it all started. Because we are saying that we need to own the bank 100% and people are jumping up and down. You see, and then inferences are drawn that, okay, if we own it 100%, it's going to lose its independence. Why? Why do we hold that view when only six out of the entire world, we are the exception, we are not the rule. We are the exception. Yeah. Let's get that right. All right, Jackson, I hear you. My thing would be that we've got to just be very clear what we mean, whether we mean ownership in terms of the shareholders or the actual independence of the central bank in terms of how it makes its decisions. So I think for me, that is a clear distinction that needs to be made. Uh, Salim, you are in Linasia. What's going on there? Hi, Salami. How are you, man? You're speaking to Bongani, Salim. Oh, sorry, 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 Bongani. Yes, what I'd like to say is that the ruling party, which is the ANC and the DA, they should leave all the differences aside and focus on the objective of getting the democracy right in this country. And basically, like I'm saying, is why do the residents now have to take to the streets and go onto media platforms to highlight the plight of what is happening with this land invasion? Why didn't government step in when it just started? When that first check came up, government should have taken that proactive approach to say, you know what? Let us resolve this issue. Now it has grown into a big, big, big problem. And now, obviously, at the end of the day, we are being now victimized because now the police are starting to shoot at the residents who are now looking at, look at, at, at the bad people. And I, I yeah. think government is stepping here very, very urgently. The longer you leave it, the more problematic it becomes. Uh, Richard Spur, uh, you know, the human rights lawyer, has just uh, tweeted saying it's the, it's, the, it's the default form of urban or town planning in South Africa today. We no longer plan and establish townships. People just occupy land and create slums, protest loudly, and then we provide water, uh, water tankers or standpipes, chemical toilets and electricity. Town planning never takes place or no longer takes place uh, he says uh, Fatima you are in Linasia uh, what are you seeing there what's going on what are your actual experiences 
Okay, so uh, Bongani, I'm not in Lanesia South. I'm actually in Lanesia proper, Lanesia Extension 1. We also do have an informal settlement that has come up, and we're also affected by electricity outages, water uh, shortages. It's come to an extent where in the month of June, we haven't had lights for about like two weeks, the transformer blew because the overload of yeah. the illegal, illegal connections. connections. Yeah. Yeah, and then we have people like at our residents in our area. We actually shock in the shower because the illegal connections are not earth. We have oh. old people shocking. Now there's people with pacemakers. They shock in the shower. There's babas that get shocked. Now I mean, this week again, the transformer blew. We were out. Every week goes by. We don't. So I do empathise with the residents. And the thing is, we've approached counsellors. We've set things right. We ask for help, and nothing happens. Why? Why, Fatima? Why is your community being being sacrificed in a way? Why are you being ignored? Do you think? I think, you know what, we are old apartheid um, area, Lanasia. Think about it. We're not sitting in the suburbs. We are old, what, what do we call ourselves, a township. And nobody cares. They don't care. If we were in Santon, everybody would run around. Fatima, that's your view. That's how you feel. That's your experience. Do you think Fatima is right that, uh, you know, they've been discarded? Nobody cares in other areas you know, people would be there in a heartbeat trying to deal with the situation. Tom, you're in Rosebank. Uh, you want to compliment traffic officers. Bongani, good morning. It's Tom. We actually spoke briefly about President Zuma yesterday morning. But anyway. Hi, Tom. Bongani, I've just driven. I've just driven. Good morning. I've just driven. I don't often come into the city center. I used to. From the deep south coming up the cliff of a valley through Boyson. Yeah around on the M1 into Young Smuts to come to a meeting that starts at 9 o'clock in Rosebank. Yeah. I have experienced something this morning I have never seen before in Johannesburg for many, many years. And I think the compliments must go to every single one of these JNPD people and the management. I came in, yeah. and every single traffic light, even where they were working, they were synchronized, and the traffic is just flowing in a manner I have not experienced before. And uh, I thought I'd just uh, comment on this. And uh, well done to the JNPD this morning. It's a time, the time's come when we can load them. This is one of those. All right, Tom, thank you for that call. Quite often it's complaints, complaints.